Hey everyone, Matt here with Dukes Models, and welcome to a wonderfully, finally cool night here in Central Texas. Now, as I am pinwashing this Tank the Rainbow Green M3, I wanted to kind of ramble on about something that's been in the back of my mind over the last, I don't know, week or so, and that is the state of Ravel's marketing, or the complete lack of it. Now, Ravel has never really been all that great in terms of you know, marketing and teasing new kits and things like that, at least as long as I've been back in the hobby. So, you know, a little bit more than a decade. And I mean, I remember once upon a time saying it seems like they were coasting, you know, they were pretty much relying on the fact that they have or had this really deep distributor network where they could get their kits into places like Hobby Lobby and Walmart and Target. And just because of that, because of the scale of their reach of that whole distribution arrangement, they really didn't put much effort into promoting their kits or building, you know, much of a, uh, much of a community or much anticipation within the actual modeling community itself. And that's pretty much held true for a number of years now. But this year, you know, especially coming out of the whole bankruptcy and merging acquisition, whatever the hell happened with Ravel Germany, and the whole Hobbyco collapse, this year it seemed like maybe they, you know, had something going on in terms of turning things around and kind of rejuvenating themselves. Mainly because they had two big releases coming out this year that got a whole bunch of people very excited. One of those was the Razor Crest from The Mandalorian, and not the tiny fit in the palm of your hand Bandai one, but, you know, one of an actual size. And the other is a new tool, 148 scale SR-71, which is, or at least when I was a kid, was basically every eight-year-old's favorite plane ever. And just a pretty much a guaranteed seller. And, you know, the, the year has gone on, and we've heard precious little about either kit to the point where it's like, are they still releasing these? Are they still going to happen? What's going on here? And over the last week, I don't know, maybe a week and a half, we've had the first looks at both of these things drop. And the Razor Crest came through by way of Tamiya Modeling Magazine International, or whatever the exact title is, uh, with Marcus Nichols and with Spencer Pollard actually doing some building on it. And, you know, I'm sure that, I'm sure that Spencer's going to do an absolutely bang-up job with that Razor Crest. But it seems a bit weird that that's the first that we're seeing of this kit at all. Like, haven't seen renders, haven't seen box art, no information on parts count, features, any of that. It just kind of pops up here at a magazine. And the same thing I would say has happened with the SR-71, which just this week popped up in an article on Hyperscale with photos that really don't let you see the detail, that don't really do the kit justice, and that make it really hard to get a sense of what you're buying into. And I can't help but look at that and look at the sort of like, you know, shit it out in a couple little small places compared to the way that, say, you know, Edward this week, for example, just dropped this huge bomb that are making a 148 scale A6M2 Zero. And that's kind of a big deal because it's a you know open ground that Tamiya left open when they did their their three and five zeros and didn't touch the two, which is the iconic one that attacked Pearl Harbor. And you know, Edward did a pretty bang up job. They had a bunch of uh they had a bunch of CAD renders. They had an announcement of like, here it's coming, it'll be available for order on December 1st. Blah blah blah. You know, Edward does a really good job of promoting their kits and building interest around their kits. And as popular as I'm sure that Zero is going to be, let's be honest, it's got nothing on a 148 scale Blackbird. And it's got probably nothing on the Razor Crest either. And you would think, man, you know, Ravel could have just milked this thing for like six months. They could have been building interest. They could have been teasing, you know, designs, engineering approaches. They could have been teasing CAD renders. They could have been teasing, you know, on the, on the Blackbird. I mean, I'm sure they could have done something with, various marking options, even though they're pretty much all black, uh, you know, but there are a couple of ones that have some slightly different stuff going on. All kinds of stuff they could have been doing, you know, even like 
facts about the SR-71, you know, we paid attention to this and we're building this in this way. All kinds of stuff. And they've done none of it. I mean, you know, it's it's just not there. And honestly, their social presence isn't really there either. Like, I, just out of curiosity, I went and looked on their Facebook page to see if maybe they had talked about the Blackbird. And their last post was from August, and it's now mid-October. And nary a mention of their new kits coming out. You know, nothing really trying to gain attention, garner interest, any of that. And I think Round 2 is also doing a, a Razor Crest, and I think they've done more marketing for theirs than Ravel has for the one they've got dropping. And it just kind of boggles my mind, you know, that this is allegedly one of the major manufacturers in the hobby. And it just, honestly, from where I stand, and I do marketing things for a living, and, it, you know, from where I stand, it seems like they're just not. They're not really putting any effort in. They're doing, like, this very low level. I mean, it's almost like the equivalent of tossing a newly released car just straight into, like, the press review pool instead of doing a big unveiling where you fly people out and drive them around somewhere interesting where the photos will look good. It's more, it's like, no, here, we'll just send this thing to your house and drive it around the neighborhood for a bit and see what you think. You know, like, the, the reviews of cars after, like, a one-year test drive kind of thing as opposed to the first impressions. And those are nice. They're interesting to read most of the time, but they're not as glitzy. They don't get the attention out there. They don't, you know, make people aware that, oh, hey, there's this cool new car that Ford or whoever is making. And it just feels like they're just kind of dumping it out there without really putting any effort into it. And I, for the life of me, can't figure out why. I, I'm pretty much beyond trying to figure it out. Um, you know, I mean, is it a resource issue? Is it a motivation issue? Is it a budget issue? But I mean, if it's a budget issue, Facebook is technically free. And I guarantee you, Ravel posting, you know, CAD renders, even just fucking screenshots, would get shared all over the place in minutes. I mean, it'd be one of those things over on SMCG where we'd be deleting multiple posts because people would be sharing it over and over and over again. It's like, no, there's one thread for that. But they haven't done anything, and they're basically just leaving it up to everybody else to kind of carry the water for them, and that's tough because, you know, you don't get a good sense of what the kit actually is. You don't get a good sense of when it's coming out. And, yeah, maybe they're just counting on the fact that they're popular enough subjects that the subjects themselves will be all that is needed to actually sell them, which, to be honest, has me worried about the quality of the kits. Because, you know, typically if you're not doing a lot of advertising for something, if you're not getting it out there and promoting it before it releases, it's kind of like the movies that don't screen for critics before they release. And the... 10 times out of 10, they suck ass. Uh, you know, that's kind of my concern here is that because we're not getting looks at what's happening when it's coming out, what it's going to look like, that it might look kind of disappointing. And so far, the Razor Crest, from what I've seen, seems pretty solid. Uh, the SR-71 looks like an SR-71. The, I mean, the pictures in the Hyperscale article don't do it any favors. The gear bays look very bland and the cockpit looks similarly like something that you would have expected to see released in like you know 95 now i don't know if that's just because it was you know the way it was painted and the way it was you know maybe it was done quickly who knows but it's not it's not what i would want to be putting out there as everybody's first look at you know probably their most major new tool in 148 scale in the past several years so, yeah, I just, I don't know what to make of it. Um, I'm curious what y'all make of it, if you've even noticed that Ravel is releasing these things, if you've seen them, if you have any thoughts on why they're not making bigger hay about them, and why they're just kind of, like, sneaking them into the marketplace, it almost feels like, um, you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And with that, I'm just going to kind of wander off back to the pin washing, because... It's weird talking and pin-watching at the same time. So, yeah. Curious to see what the hell's going on with Ravel. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing Spencer's Razor Crest cross the line, see what it looks like. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing some better pictures of the Blackbird. 
Uh, it's not really an aircraft that super interests me much anymore, but hey, I'm always down for a good kit of something that is just straight up iconic. So yeah, sound off in the comments. Let me know. Curious to see what y'all think, and I'll catch y'all later.